Distressed. Distressed. Come here, come here, come here. He'll eat at like 6 and then he's like up for the day at 7.30. And I'm like, no, I <laughs> just leave. It's only been an hour and a half. We just kind of looked up like a list of names and <laughs> went through it and we're like, ones that we agreed on and Maverick was really the only one that we really agreed on um, and we just both kind of liked it so we rolled with it and I, even like having decided on it I still didn't fully decide on it until I saw him though so we I kept saying I have to see him I have to see him and he still looked like a Maverick and then um, Miller is my mom's last name so he got a family name in there I guess one thing I did, I was not prepared for is I am not really like a, a worrier or like, I generally think that things work themselves out in life. Um, but constantly, like it's just always a worry in my mind. Like, is he eating enough? Is he hot enough? Is, or is he warm enough? Is he too warm? Is he hungry? Is he too full? Is he gassy? Does he need a diaper change? Like. Is he comfy? Is he, I don't know, like there's just, it's just always like on a reel, like worrying about him. Whether, and he could be, he's just sleeping, he's fine. Every waking hour, every waking second literally is just like about him. And it, you're definitely exhausted at the end of the day from that. That you can, I can just give him to him and it's like an, an hour total of me running and taking a shower that I can just like <laughs> breathe for a second. They ruled that he would not be able to tolerate labor, and they went ahead and did a C-section. So it just happened really fast. Like one second, they were like, "You can try and, and see if he'll recover, and and we can, you know, do this for the rest of the day and keep trying." And then we were like, "Okay, we'll see how he does." And then five minutes later, the doctor came back in and she said, "We need to stop trying. He needs to come out." It was kind of crazy because you have to. I was laying flat on my back and there's like a curtain up and so I can't see anything, I can only hear it. And hearing him, I just like started crying immediately. Um, but the, the doctor held him up over the curtain so I could see um, while they, and then, you know, they cut the cord and did all that stuff and gave him some oxygen because he was quite purple. <laughs> it was real dark. Um, and then after like a minute or two, brought him over and put him on my chest. And there's no word for it really. They've never been around babies or kids really or anything. Um, and so we brought him in in the car seat um, and just kind of let them sniff around and listen to him. And they were really, really interested. And so we just took it slow. So in those times that he's awake, we'll, you know, play on his mat or we'll go for a walk or I don't sit in a bouncy chair or walk around or look at lights and all kinds of fun stuff. We know there's a three hour gap and potentially he's gonna sleep that three hours or potentially he's not, but you know at some point the next feeding's coming. So while he can be crazy and mess everything up, you still know there is some structure to it. Which is kind of nice because if like, it doesn't like throw your whole day apart. Like if say he eats and then he's just like crying for or up and just like fussy for the next hour and doesn't want to sleep and then you're just like oh the whole day is ruined but it's really not because it just restarts itself mm -hmm. at the next time you know eats. in three hours yeah he's eating again, again and you he'll get probably start go over. to sleep and then we can try again yeah. up until that six week mark when I could be cleared to exercise again so once I hit that everything was good and started doing like a walk, jog, return to running every other day. Um, and for right now, we don't have a treadmill or anything here. And I can't take, he's too little to go on a, a jogging stroller right now. Um, so I've just been waiting until Jess gets home from work and going for a little walk, jog in the evening. Andrew and Amy made up like a return to running for me. So it started off super easy with like six by one minute jog, one minute walk. and just kind of building up from there. It goes to nine minutes and 12 minutes and 15, you know, just builds it up incrementally. I don't know 
I don't have any level of confidence in it because I've never done it, but I will say that I'm surprised how um, easy the recovery has been. Having a C-section, I always heard like it's a lot harder recovery. You know, you have to probably take more than six weeks off and um, you're not gonna be able to move around and need a lot of help, just like day-to-day -day stuff. Um, but after the first week, I would say, I was able to move around fine. I really didn't have hardly any pain with it. And talking to the physical therapist, she said that, that it's because you worked out while you were pregnant, because you were active and you'll have a much easier recovery because of that. I feel good about, about coming back because I, I don't feel like I have any limitations right now.